On YouTube, you've probably come across somebody trying to scrape things together to build some kind of vehicle. Many budget challenges have been themed along these lines. One of the difficult things about that was propulsion. Constraints like time, budget, and tools slash knowledge often prevent more optimum solutions from being implemented. Seemingly the de facto universal solution that people fall back on is the humble leaf blower, especially since you can easily get battery powered ones that are easy to use. But there is a very pervasive flaw in reasoning on how people use these leaf blowers, leaving them wondering why the performance isn't as good as they were hoping for. I'll explain their mistake using physics, demonstrate the principles with a scale hovercraft that I whipped up myself, huh? and show you how to make one for yourself. Next, on the Tinker. Instead of blowing, it sucked. So I'm going to use the Home Depot hovercraft as seen on Fowler's Makery and Mischief that he recently posted. I thought it was a very entertaining video, a lot of fun, uh, and he had an interesting idea of why he wanted to build it, but he also had a very common mistake, a mistake shared by a lot of the other creators of homemade vehicles that are trying to use leaf blowers for things. And I thought his video demonstrated it quite clearly. So I'm hoping I can demonstrate that mistake in logic and explain it in such a way where he can take that knowledge and and make his vehicle even better. His mistake is a classic physics mistake of failing to implement Newton's third law. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so here's the thumbnail from his Home Depot hovercraft video. Again, I suggest you go and watch it for yourself. It was quite entertaining. You can see here that he's using quite a few, 10 in total leaf blowers. And I'll give you a hint as to what's wrong. This. Sorry, Fowler, I'm going to be covering your face for now. So the mistake he made was thinking that the air coming out of the leaf blowers for propulsion would be like pushing against the ice and making them go forward. You could see that at about the timestamp of 12 minutes and 28 seconds, somewhere around there and, and watch for a couple minutes and you'll, you'll get the idea. He thinks you want as much air pressure pushing against the ice like it will give you better traction or something like that. He had that in his head so solidly that he even wanted to cut the ends of the leaf blowers nozzle things so that they would be as close to the ice as possible. Now he's far from the only person making this kind of mistake. I've seen lots of people making go-karts and cars and sleds and boats and all of these types of vehicles and making the same kind of mistakes, sticking it down into the water, or pointing it down at the ground, thinking that will make them go faster. But if that's the way that it worked, then airplanes, boats, helicopters, hovercraft, and heck, birds wouldn't even work. So Newton's third law states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction, which means if you want to get your craft to go forwards, you've got to make something go backwards. The more effectively you push things backwards, the more effectively you push yourself forwards, essentially. In Fowler's video, he states that his biggest disappointment about the entire vehicle was the propulsion. Now, the trick to making that better would be to take these leaf blowers and instead of pointing them kind of downwards like this, point them straight backwards, and that would make you go forwards the most effectively. And then conducting tests to try and figure out how you can get the most airflow backwards as possible. So the way to think about it with a leaf blower is that the fan blades are pushing air backwards and the air in turn is pushing against the fan blades, pushing you forwards. Action, reaction. Pushing them down doesn't make your craft go further faster because you're getting some kind of traction with the ice. That's just not how it works. Instead, if you point the thrusters downwards, all it does is push the back of the craft upwards. As seen in his craft here, a lot of power is basically wasted pushing the back of the craft upwards instead of pushing the craft forwards. Nothing's ever going to be perfect, but a practical experiment can perhaps help demonstrate how the different configurations for the propulsion can make a considerable difference in the total effectiveness of the craft, getting it to behave the way you want it to. And that's why I built this, this little hovercraft. I've got a time lapse and I'll explain it in there. So to make a hovercraft just like the one I made, uh, what I did was to take a plastic shopping bag. This one was from a local grocery store. And that will be my skirt. And then you'll need cardboard, tape, uh, and some wires. You'll also need some kind of power source. Two fans to build one like I did. One for lifting, filling the, uh, the cushion, making that kind of air cushion uh, down there uh, underneath the craft. So it kind of, well, hovers. And then uh, I used the most powerful computer muffin style fan, you can see it right there, that I had, uh, or at least I could find at the time. And you measure that out so that you can uh, tape that down on the board and you cut out 
a hole for the air to go through. So I just made it uh, slightly undersized. I'm just using masking tape or whatever. It doesn't really matter what kind of thing you're using. You just want the air sealed. And then I also had a kind of weird ducted fan that I don't even know what it's from. <laughs> but I had it, so I decided to use it because it's the closest thing to an, a leaf blower. Now you could use another muffin fan or whatever if you wanted to. That might work. But I wanted to show this as a as an effective demonstration for for how uh, it would compare to something like what Fowler built. You basically cut a hole in the bottom of the of the skirt there uh, for the air to escape and create that sort of cushion and. Um, then you fold up all the plastic around this and seal it up. You can see the batteries over there to the right. Those are the uh, 18650s that I will be using to power it. Okay, so to finish it up, you just have to put some kind of power source. So I decided to go with these 18650 cells to power it. Connected them all together with magnets and uh, just put some tape on the bottom there to hold them on there. Uh, you could do the same or you could remotely power it, either with an ATX power supply and some cords or something, or have a battery that you would carry around if your fans aren't powerful enough to actually make it move with all that weight on there. But I basically ran everything at approximately 12 volts. And by using these little magnets, you can actually use it as a sort of uh, switch by just using these kind of alligator clip wires. And it'll snap right on there. And then you can just yank on the wires to turn it off. <laughs> that worked well enough for my testing. You can see here, I made a ducted fan assembly so that it would replicate what Fowler was doing. And I also made a different motor mounting system that would make the motor be mounted parallel with the surface of the craft. So I ran a series of tests with that leaf blower substitute thruster type thing in both configurations. Downwards with the angle cut tube like Fowler had it and just mounted to the top like a conventional hovercraft. I made a track on the studio slash workshop slash garage floor, basically a start and a stop line that was approximately two meters long so that we could get consistent timing. One thing you learn pretty quick about hovercraft is that it's pretty difficult to get them to go straight. Again, this won't be perfect, but I think the average of all of these results ends up showing it pretty clearly. So here you can see a series of four races. I paired up one from each configuration so you can see the relative difference in times. You can see that the one that has Fowler's design is always slower. The one that had the thing pointed downwards, like in Fowler's, had an average time to go two meters of, of 6.246 seconds, whereas the one that had the thruster pointing straight backwards had an average time of 3.88 eight three second on average that was 2.363 seconds longer or as a percentage 61 percent approximate i'll put all the numbers down in the description so i think you get the idea having it pointed straight back is a lot faster than having it pointed down so my recommendation to fowler and anyone else who is trying to make funny things with leaf blowers would be to point them straight backwards from where you want to go and you might want to even consider removing the tubes i'm not entirely sure if they are effectively helping you in an application like this because they do direct the air more in the direction you might want it to go, but it also might create some kind of constriction, might slow down the airflow. So you might want to test with both the tubes being on and off. Not sure what would be better. I really want to see Fowler's design really scoot. So I hope he takes this advice and makes it even better. It'd be cool to see if it works for the application he had in mind. If you want to know what that is, go watch his video. But if you still want more power, yeah, maybe having a big fan like you were talking about, Peter Schreepel style, that might work even better. Depends on the scale you go for. Just remember, don't point it downwards or upwards, just back. Okay, I think that pretty much wraps it up. Thank you for watching, and if you like this, then please consider subscribing. I'll hopefully be making more videos in the relatively near future. Yeah. And if you're interested in other content I might be making, perhaps more discussion and uh, informational and educational type content, right now sort of centering around electric vehicles, but we'll see where it goes then check out my other channel the tinker talks and if you had any suggestions as to other topics you would like me to cover or other ideas you thought perhaps i would be good at exploring then go ahead and leave a comment thank you and goodbye